you imagine how much the Lord be warning his children to enjoy the prosperity and wealth and how in his wisdom he created these wealth gates. Somebody, uh, could you give me what Isaiah 60 verse 11 says? How many, how many of y'all got that? Let me, let me have somebody give me what Isaiah chapter 60 verse 11 says. Can somebody write it on the screen? Somebody write it on the screen. Isaiah 60 verse 11. But imagine how Jesus created the wealth gates. And how he knew that the wealth gates was going to allow his children to experience his love luxuriously. Because Jesus want to lavish his love on you. And see, the whole seed thing is not the Lord taking anything from you. He's giving you what was taken from you. That's perfect, Sharika. That's perfect, Annalise. That's perfect, daughter. Look at this. It says, your gate shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto you the wealth of the Gentiles. Now look at, look at what it's saying here. It says that your gate shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto you the wealth of the Gentiles. This go in line with Luke chapter 6 verse 38 where Jesus said, give it shall be given unto you good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. These wealth gates are what the Lord is telling you going to come day and night. Say, Father, I receive my wealth gates. Saints, we preach in the Bible. This stuff is in the Bible. You understand? Like, this is not a made-up doctrine. It's in the Bible. The Lord is telling you that he going to give you wealth gates and your gates shall be open continually. Now, let me just tell you something. What shuts these gates when you're not sowing? When you're not sowing money? You shut these gates. So, so watch this here. You know what we do as children, God? We hear this good news and we don't activate it. You know why? Because we don't sow. And then we just hear it all our life. And we always tell the people, God promised me this. God promised me this. And you ain't got it. You know how I know because I am somebody that God promised stuff. And I got everything God done promised me. Everything that I've heard God promised me, I got it. So if the gates can be open, it can be shut. And that's what I want you to see. If the gates can be open, it can be shut. Because it says my gates are open continually. If. The gates can be open. It can also be shut. And that's where the second heaven come in. Because the second heaven make you fearful about sowing. The second heaven make you miss financial invitations from God. The second heaven make you procrastinate until you eat the seed. Because procrastination is the governor of eating seeds. Oh my God. That's powerful. You never heard that before. That's apostolic. I wish Ramirez was on here. Ramirez, are you on here? Huh? Hainsley, Hainsley should have been on here. Juan, Chicka Juan, Chicka Juan, Juan. Pastor Juan, where Pastor Juan at? <laughs> Ramirez, you ever heard this before? Procrastination is the governor of eating seeds. So procrastination make you eat the seed. Why? Because procrastination is really satanic contemplation, satanic meditation. So in the moment that you're in 
procrastination, you're actually entertaining a demon spirit. The demon spirit is interesting to you. You can't procrastinate until a demon catches your eye. A demon has to become the apple of your eye, the apple of your conversation, before you can ever procrastinate. Procrastination means that you're enjoying something that Satan is saying. Satan is a charmer. But that's why God said, put on the whole armor. See, when I sow, I stop the charming realm of Satan. Now, watch this. I don't know if y'all know this, but I know this as a prophet. Witches use it, they use charms as a form of their satanic powers. I don't know if y'all know about this, but you'll be enlightened by it. They use charms. When people go to witch doctors and try to do different stuff, they use charms to release satanic powers, satanic uh, curses. Now, when you are a sower, you break the charming realm of Satan. My God. Jesus. When, when you sow, you break the charming realm of Satan. So, so where he like to charm you and make you seem like, hey, what he telling you is good news. And you know, he said, because Satan will act like he trying to save you financially when he tell you not to sow. That's how he rolled. While he keeping you in witchcraft with your wealth, uh, wealth witchcraft, because now wealth is rebelling against you, you rebelling against wealth. Because when you don't sow, you rebel against wealth. When, when you sow, you rebel against poverty. The seed is rebellion against lack. So to the spirit of lack, when you a sower, you a witch. When you sowing your way out to the spirit of poverty and lack, you are a witch. So financial demons, they call you witches when you are sower because you rebelling against their assignment. My God. You you should be quiet, Siri. Shut 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 the front door. Don't don't say it again. When you're sowing, see, she got Jezebel's spirit on her trying to come cut me off. When you're sowing, you become the witch to financial angels, for financial demons, rather. And they hate you with a passion because you're rebelling against their demonic assignment to shut money down. If you trust God, let God make you rich. Let him make you rich and don't go halfway with the seed, don't go halfway with honor and God. Go all the way in. Because saints, let me tell you something. There's some people that don't even got no prayer life. But their seed got a greater voice than people that's in prayer. You heard what I said? There's people that, watch this here. There's people that don't even got a prayer life where they talking with their mouth all the time. But their seed got a greater weight in talking to God than people that are actually in prayer. So... Their seed is louder. And the seed is communicating to the Lord. I'm ready to live this blessed life, this rich life, this wealthy life. <laughs> so when you are sower, you're prophesying to the earth to release all the money that's supposed to come to you. When you are sower, you shut off Esau. You shut off Esau. You shut off all the blessing snatchers. When you are sower, you shut off Esau. And Herod can't cut your head off. You cut his head off. You cut him and his family head off. Because... Herod is a spirit of intimidation for you not to get rich, for you not to get wealthy. But when you are sower, you shut off the whole family of Herod and Pharaoh. Your seed will create the Red Sea to be divided for you and be collided for your enemies. They'll drown in the Red Sea. And saints, lack is your enemy. Debt is your enemy. 
uh, budgets is your enemy. You're not supposed to have no budget as a child of God. Saints, I, uh, the meetings that I've done, I've never had a budget at my meeting. I've never had people gather to pray that we'll have finances for a welcome Holy Spirit fire conference. I've never done that. Not one time. Not even when I started doing the conferences. I, I never did that. Not one meeting did I ever have intercessors praying for finances because I'm a sower. So as a leader, I'm sowing. So I got the money anointed on me because I'm honoring God. So I don't live by budgets. Because budgets won't let you budge. When God speak to you, you ignore him. When you got budgets, budgets won't let you budge. That's a, see, your heart get hardened. Uh, and then you get a pink eye like James Harden. That's, part two. Screw it.